ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Corvette Ed's Garage. House of fast cars and fast bikes. Today we're diving underneath the hood of my classic beauty, my 1985 Corvette. Our focus. Well, as you remember, last episode, we did the uh, installation of the supercharger oil drain plug and set up the return light. That's my previous video, but uh, we'll make it easy for you. You can just look, uh, click on this card over here and that'll take you right to it. And finally, the sandwich oil plate adapter that it, originally I was contemplating, but I wasn't going to actually go that route. But, however, we had a setback. So, uh, as we go into further into the, into the video, you'll see what, uh, what type of challenges I had to uh, uh, get that um, feed line to the supercharger and why I actually went with the sandwich oil plate adapter. But I'm not eating a sandwich that my neighbor made when his apartment been smelling like a dead raccoon's ass stinking up my house. Well, all that installed, the oil return line and the oil feed line, what's that mean? Show me the money. Just let that <laughs> Well, now we can actually put the supercharger on. This video is gonna cover all that. So I'm pretty jazzed about that because this time around, uh, it's finally after as long as I waited to get this thing done, I'm finally going to be able to actually put the supercharger on. And I do uh, apologize because I know it's been a while since I posted, but I've had some PC issues which I have rectify, and uh, I, I really got a nice PC for this time around since I'm doing YouTube videos. And also I've been re redoing my, uh, my home office slash gym. Uh, also been doing a lot of focusing on working out. I've had to change up the, the type of style that I'm used to as far as lifting iron and whatnot. <laughs> Which kind of sucks because uh, uh, anyway, it, it, it doesn't matter on this, 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 this film here. I, I'm gonna push out another video um, uh, here after this one uh, uh, to kind of touch base on all that and I'll touch base on why it's actually taking me this long to get the supercharger in. So, uh, now, if you've been here from the beginning, you pretty much know what's been going on and why it's been taking me so long. I'll update my new viewers here after this video um, on what's been, what's been going on. So, with that being said, uh, let's get to it right after this. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Okay, so here are the fittings that are provided by the Pro Charger along with the hoses and oil feed line. Now, this extension right here uh, is kind of long, but the extension is supposed to go into the block, which is going to be replacing the oil temperature sensor. Now, the fitting, uh, the elbow, um, that's going to be going into the extension into the block. But the thing I have a problem with is the oil temperature sensor is about as long as that extension. And putting all those three together, I'm barely going to have any room because it's going to be hitting up on the side of the firewall. And the only really way to find out is to go ahead and pull that extension. So let me go, I mean, that oil temperature sensor. So let me go in there and, uh, underneath the car and get that out. And Brian, I'll be right back. Okay, now that I got the uh, sensor out, you kind of get a look at the length of the sensor. Um, 
it's pretty long. It's uh, about as long as the uh, extension is. And uh, uh, putting those three together, it's just going to hit the side of my firewall. Um, and not only that, I can't even get that sensor into the uh, fitting uh, and because it's too fat. Um, I would have to drill out that f f fitting a little bit more in order to make it work, and it just seems too much, too much of a hassle. Therefore, I'm just going to go ahead with the oil filter, uh, a sandwich plate adapter, and call it a day. That was easy. Okay, just to give you an idea where the sensor is located, it sits right above the uh, oil uh, filter housing, um, the sensor I showed you previously. Um, and uh, as, as you can see, there's really not that much room going on in there. So, and I, I like my stuff to look clean. Now the sandwich plate adapter, it's going to be connected to the oil filter housing right there. Uh, it's going to provide me with a much cleaner look uh, to, and still feed the supercharger uh, much better than trying to tap into that sensor right there. And welcome back to the candy store. Anyway, what we have here is the sandwich plate adapter that we're going to use to feed the supercharger. I kind of jump ahead on the uh, sandwich plate. Um, so I've already installed the fittings that I, I, I needed to install, plus the caps for the uh, remainder of the three ports. I got the total four ports. You got this one here, this one, two here, and one there. Uh, this is actually going to feed my supercharger, um, which is going to be this hose right here, and it will go in like so, and then this other end will go into uh, the supercharger. And uh, the kit comes with uh, uh, four of these uh, um, four of these nuts uh, to block off the ports. Well, they originally were aluminum and uh, aluminum doesn't work for me. I went with the stainless steel. Um, besides that, I, I tried wrenching down on a, a one of the aluminums and ended up having to easy it out because uh, the inner head just stripped or uh, rounded off on me. So as I mentioned, I wasn't going to uh, use a sandwich plate adapter until I ran into that issue. And there's really not that much information out there about sandwich plate adapters being used for uh, Superchargers. So I had to call call my guy over at the super Chris at the supercharger store, and he gave me the green light to go ahead to use the sandwich adapter. As long as I use the fittings that were provided from uh, Pro Charger, uh, we should be good. Now I I, I went with Glow Shift. Um, I love decals. I love it when they put decals in the package uh, because that is the uh, gauges that I'm going to be using. Uh, reason being is the uh, gauges uh, turn colors. There's one model gauge that's seven colors, another model gauge that's uh, uh, ten colors. I'll probably just use the seven colors. I just need three colors to actually let me know what gauge is what. So I'll assign those colors to the gauges when I get them. So other than that, uh, that's it for the candy store. <laughs> Okay, uh, we did have another setback. As you see, I'm pulling out uh, a harmonic balancer bolt, a new one. Uh, it's a Moroso. And um, I um, chew, kind of chewed up the um, uh, bolt that I had in there originally, trying to turn the motor over. Uh, there's really not enough head on there where this one has more head than the original. And then, I, of course, I forgot to... Uh, uh, I thought I had it out of gear, but I didn't, and that didn't make that made matters worse. So uh, we're replacing it with this uh, Moroso uh, harmonic balancer bolt. All right, let's get started. We'll get that tooth to stop. Don't you worry. <laughs> Uh, for starters, we're using a 7 8 drill bit. 
um, that's going to allow me to tap in a um, half inch uh, NT MPT National Pipe Thread. Now, um, reg uh, regular standard thread is not the same as National Pipe Thread, so they're two different uh, entities. Um, take your time. You really can't afford a mistake uh, on it, on something like this. You're cutting into aluminum. Um, and just remember, if you make a mistake, it's going to cost you almost $80 to replace that piece that I'm uh, drilling at the moment. Now, I like to use a little bit of lube when I'm cutting into metal or aluminum. Uh, in this situation, I'm using a, a Magic Tap. Uh, and if you don't have anything like that, just use regular oil. You need to have something to, to use to cut that metal with so it, it prevents it from cracking as you cut through it. And what I generally like to do is I like to just go so far and then back off uh, and I keep doing that until I finally cut through the uh, whole piece. And there you have it, nice clean threads. And that's how simple it is. Nothing really tough about it. Just take your time and double check everything and you'll be fine. So taking a look at underneath the vehicle, unfortunately, uh, I can't get this vehicle high enough uh, where I can shoot some good footage. So I'm just going to have to show you uh, exactly what I'm going to be doing. Uh, this is my transmission. Uh, you see there's a leak there. I need to address that. Uh, and then the bell housing of the transmission. You see there's a leak there as well. And that should be corrected uh, once I uh, pull the pan off and uh, replace the seal on it. Now, for starters, uh, no punt intended, that is my starter. I would have to remove that starter in order to uh, remove the pan. Now, as far as the transmission line, well, uh, hopefully I'll just be able to loosen the brackets enough to where I can just move them out of the way to get that starter out. Otherwise, uh, I'll have to remove those lines to get to uh, that starter, which I don't really want to do. And if you're going to remove the starter, make sure you disconnect the battery first because you have that positive cable going right to that starter. Uh, that was the passenger side. Now let's move on to the driver's side. Now, as you can see, uh, the only thing in the way, actually this is not in the way, that guard right there that protecting those hoses uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to remove that all together because uh, the uh, fittings that I have are so massive, uh, there's no possible way that I'm going to be able to keep that guard on there. It's just going to be in the way. So, uh, it's unfortunate. This coolant tube, now that goes all the way around the front of the oil pan, so I can probably leave it on there uh, to remove the oil pan but to put the oil to replace the oil pan that's that I'm gonna have to remove that tube which is gonna be a pain in the ass it is what it is I don't recall any Corvette in history that wasn't tight anyway um, this is uh, pretty much it that's uh, the only obstacles that I have in the way for now so let's move on to uh, the finished results well there you go ladies and gents uh, now, I wish I could take uh, a video underneath that car to show you what I did, but unfortunately I don't have a lift to do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's the sandwich plate adapter. I will be capping off that fitting uh, and adding the oil filter to it and uh, uh, filling it up with oil. I want to run the car first before I actually hook up that supercharger. Uh, I want to make sure everything's working good. I have no issues with fuel. And whatnot and there you see the uh, oil re uh, supercharger oil return line uh, let's go back to that uh, there's the supercharger oil return line uh, that's capped off so uh, that's pretty much it underneath the car I'm pretty much got everything uh, uh, back together about the only thing I need to do left is the uh, uh, install the starter uh, and get that all back together uh, as you can see, everything else is done. Uh, moving on. Now, the bulldozer.
How do we have the oil, the oil feed line hooked up to, uh, from the adapter plate? Uh, we got to install the return line on the supercharger first before I can test the line. Okay, this is the this is the moment I've been waiting for. And to put this supercharger on this bracket. bracket. Oh wait a minute. Yeah, that's right, dummy. Look a little closer, dummy. Something's not right. You, you just, just now noticing you're the dummy? Oh no. Tell me it's not so. This is the incorrect bracket. <laughs> that's what you get, dummy. Should have seen that to shine. I did. Holy shit. This whole time, I cannot believe it. This bracket that's on there right now, it's not for the P600B supercharger that I have. Holy shit, did you do it? You did. You let the shine get to you, dummy. Yeah, I know. Okay? I need to put sunglasses on to go down the shine on that bracket. If you didn't have your head so far up your ass, you would have noticed it. Whatever. I already know. Little kid, you can't anyway. just do it, dummy. You can hold off for a second. As you, as you, as you've been following on, and, and as you remember, um, I had to send the supercharger back to Procharger because the kit that I ordered was the polish kit. So the supercharger I received was the satin kit. So the satin kit uh, entails a satin supercharger and a non-polished uh, bracket, uh, supercharger bracket. So. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubts. No button intended. So, I ended up sending that back and waited another month before I received the uh, kit back to me with a polished uh, supercharger and a polished uh, bracket. And this whole time, uh, you know, I mean, everything's so shiny on it. It just went over my head. I didn't even realize it. Big dummy. Enough of that. And the bracket that I received was an actual bracket for a D1 supercharger, which is a little bit different uh, than the PD600 or the P600B. Uh, the D1 is not 50 state legal for California. And if I didn't live in California, I would have moved a long time ago. I would have ordered those D1, and the kit would have been a lot cheaper. Because you're pay, you're, in California, you're, you're paying for the R&D that ProCharge provides. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is. But anyway, so this kind of screws things up. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a bracket to put the supercharger on. So either I wait for a new bracket, or I just go ahead and start the, the intercooler, which is going to be the last part of this supercharger build. Uh, fortunately, ProCharger is working with, working with me, uh, thanks to uh, Chris over at the Supercharger store um, and his input, uh, you know, because my warranty is already uh, up on the Supercharger, unfortunately. It's a little over a year, so actually ProCharger didn't have to do the swap, but they did anyway. You know, I was willing to pay for another bracket. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's on me. I'm the one that uh, took so long to get the supercharger together for this car. So, but all good. Uh, when I can get it, I don't know. So, hopefully, I'll get it uh, soon because, uh, you know, they have to send the bracket out and have to get polished. It's a different cut. I don't even cut for the uh, polish version, so uh, three, four weeks maybe, I don't know, but it is what it is. I can't cry over film milk, I just need to continue on. Hopefully I'll get it for the next episode where I'm going to start uh, uh, taking the, uh, uh, the the parts off the front end to make them for the uh, interview. But uh, guys, you know, uh, I'm sure you're just as disappointed as I am, and I, I do apologize for that, but uh, mistakes happen, 
and you can't blame anyone. It was during the period of COVID, so uh, there were a lot of mistakes during COVID, let me tell you. Uh, not just uh, what just happened here, but uh, all good. The, the good thing is I'm getting, I'm getting uh, a replacement. When? I don't know yet. So until then, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you got any value out of this or you're getting any value out of any of the videos that I pr uh, produce here or create, uh, give, give, it a, give it a like. Give it a little thumbs up. I, I appreciate that. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on another episode of Corvette as Garage. Yeah, can't wait to see the next comedy special with Dumb.